Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So use a ratio test to determine if this series will converge or if it will diverge. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this, we uh, we need to, uh, well, when it comes to the ratio test, we need to know the value of this thing here. Well, the next term divided by the current term, that will, this whole thing here will then become this whole thing here. So now in the realm from 1 to infinity, uh, this thing here will always be positive. This will always be positive, always positive, always positive, making the whole lot always positive. So we can uh, we can discard the absolute sign. That will then take us to that will then take us to here. That will then take us to here. Uh, and then now um, now visualize visualize this as being one block multiplying another block. And then visualize this n plus one factorial. It's really n plus one times n factorial. And we've done this before. Uh, this visualize this block here as being n plus one times n factorial. Uh, and then and then multiply this out. That will then give you this. And then you can see um, you can now see uh, looking at this block here, four to the power of n. That will later cancel out with this. And then uh, and then n factorial will cancel out with this. And then this n factorial here will cancel out with this. So so this whole thing here, this whole thing here, will uh, will become this, will become will become this, because uh, because four uh, four to the power of n cancels out. Uh, this will cancel out with this, and then this will cancel out with this. So uh, so you've got your four here, and then you've got n plus one, and then you've got your n plus one, and then two uh, n factorial. And then what's left is 2n plus 2 factorial, which is this. So when you get to this stage here, um, this will, will, will tidy up with this. But you, you, um, you've got to try and understand what's going on here. Uh, so now we, we would need to understand what, what it really means to have 2 plus, uh, 2n plus 2 factorial. Because, because, um, this will later on cancel, cancel us out with this. But we need to have an understanding of what's going on here. What does this even mean? So when you don't understand something, put something simple. So so put something simple into this 2n uh, 2n factorial. Put something simple in there, just so that you get an understanding of what's going on. So here's two times three. So when you put three into into the end, put something simple into here. So so uh, two times three would be six. So really it means six factorial, which is this thing here. And then what does this actually mean? Well, we, we are trying to understand this, so put something simple there. Let's, for example, put the number 3 into here. This would be 6. So 6 plus 2, 6 plus 2 factorial. So it's really the same as 6 plus 2 factorial. 6 plus 2 would be 8. That's this thing here. So it's really, it's really this, well, when you have this divided by this, you can see that 6, uh, it cancels out here, it cancels out here. So all that you're left is all that you're left with is seven times eight. So what that means is what that means is when n equals three, so this is your n here. This is your n. When you times two, two n here, when you times two, that will then take you to here. So so this this number six here is two n. So this number seven here is one notch higher than the two n. So it will be two n plus one. This eight here would be uh would be would be this thing plus an extra one, so it would be two n plus two. So when when you're trying to understand this, this thing here actually breaks up, um, breaks down to uh, to this, which is your eight here, two n, uh, two n plus two times two n plus one, which is this seven here, uh, which is this two n plus one here, and then the rest is just really two n factorial because this is two n factorial. So the rest, so so you can break this up as this times this times this. So so visualize. So when when you're here, break this up as uh, as as one block times another block times another block. So now you can see that this thing here will cancel out with this. So that will then take you to that will then take you to here. So remember, we are trying to find the limit as n tends to infinity. When you get to this stage here, you you. Um, if you get this times, rem remember you are really after the leading term because because you're you're after you're, you're trying to find the limit as n tends to, to infinity. So get this times this times this. That will be 
4 to the power of n squared. We can pretty much ignore all the rest because we are looking at the leading term. Uh, and then this times this, uh, that will then give you 4n squared. Um, so w w you can forget, a forget about all the other small negligible terms. You can you just concentrate on the um, on the highest leading term. So that so the limit of this is actually one. Um, try try to train yourself to recognize that the limit of this is actually one. Uh, because you're you're only after the leading term here. The leading term would be four n squared. The leading term here, if you want to, then multiply out the whole thing. That would then give you this. And then uh, and then you uh, you would say, oh, well, as n tends to infinity, uh, the, the numerator will act as 4n squared, and this thing, you can multiply it out, but, but then you don't really care about this, don't really care about this, don't really care about this. So you're, you're, concentra you're concentrating on this. But when you come to do it by yourself, learn to recognize this straight away. Don't bother doing this, this step. Just recognize that the leading term, the leading term is this times this times this, this times this times this, and so on. So the limit of this, you know, so the limit, the limit of this is actually one. So the limit is actually one. So going back to the beginning of time, uh, this was our original question. We are trying to determine if this will converge or if it, or if this will diverge. Um, we, when when it comes to the ratio test, we will need to know this value. Well, this value here equals one. Well, one. Well, when it equals one, well, our value here equals one. So, it's, so our value here is not less than one. So we can forget about this. Our value here, this is our value here, is not greater than one. So we can forget about this. Our value here actually is one. Is one. So we we can conclude that it's inconclusive, if that makes sense. Um. So so this is our this is our our, our scenario here. We. We've, we've now, we've now, well, when, when it equals one, it's inconclusive, meaning that we, we can't, we can't really tell if this will, uh, converge or if this will, con will diverge when it comes to the ratio test. So when, so as far as you're concerned, when it equals one, you can't really tell if this is going to converge or if this will diverge. But as it turns out, you can actually tell if this is going to, well, I'll, I'll continue in the next video. But as far as the ratio, uh, the ratio test is concerned. When it equals one, it's inconclusive. So we can't tell if this will uh, divert, if this will converge, or if this will diverge. It's inconclusive. But there is a way to actually tell if this will converge or if, it, or if this will diverge, which I will explain in the next video.